Hey crafters, this is Paulette. I've got my April Stampin' Up! orders in, a treat for my Stampin' Up! demo, and some goodies from Joann's. So let's look at Stampin' Up! For the month of April 2014, I chose this Swallowtail background stamp. I purchased it in the clear mount just because the clear mount background stamps are $13.95. If you get them in the wood mount, they are $17.95. On this day, it allowed me to order this reinker that I desperately needed. So I chose the clear mount. I do not have any of the Stampin' Up blocks. So I've got mine mounted on this Martha Stewart block that's six and one quarter by four and one quarter, and it just fits on there. So I lucked out. It worked out fine. I've played around just a little bit. The Stampin' Up! demonstrators are doing fabulous things online with this stamp, so I had to have it. We're getting down to the wire with our catalog. It expires May 31st, but odds are I thought it probably will carry over, but you know what? My list, my wish list, is so eternally long that I just went ahead and ordered it. And played around a little bit. Um, one of my favorite card artists is not a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Her name is Heather Telford. And she does what I would call watercolor stamping. Uh, she makes the most amazing watercolor panels with her stamps. And I will put a link on my blog to her blog so you can go and look at some of her photos. She's starting to make some tutorials and her panels are just amazing. I, I am just blown away by the things she achieves in watercolor with her stamps. So I took some stays on and stamped this first butterfly and absolutely hated it. It was a very faded image. I stamped on the rough side of the watercolor paper and threw that aside, absolutely hated it. Then I took some Coastal Cabana and Heather sprays water. She either puts brushes water on her panel or sprays water on her first and then stamps on top of this wet panel. And then the ink, you can see here where the ink faded and bled away from the stamp and just becomes beautiful. So I tried to do some of the things that she does. She'll stamp and then move the ink around a little bit with a watercolor paintbrush or aqua painter and then comes back and stamps on top of the image again and typically she re-stamps the same image in a darker ink to give all that definition back and I was afraid I don't know why I was afraid to do that I was afraid I wouldn't line up exactly um, and I hadn't even thought about using stamp -a jig I could do that and so I just doodled doodled on that and did my own thing. Well, there was lots of Coastal Cabana ink still on the stamp after I made this impression and I came back and just did this and just got ink all over here. It was beautiful. I should have left it alone. I came back in and stamped these flowers so you can't even see all of that wonderfulness that the Coastal Cabana, you know, the different parts of the butterfly that it left outside of the butterfly but you know it's okay I will use this I will put this on a card and roll on so just really fun I'll share Heather's blog with you so just a really cool stamp I also chose Tempting Turquoise Pad I've got the old formula in the reinker and I've used most of it. Well, now I've slopped it around. There's only about a third of this ink left in here. So I ordered the pad and the new formula reinker. You are not supposed to put the old formula in the new pads or vice versa. The new reinker formula in the old fabric pads. And that's how you can tell the difference is the new pads 
have this foam and the old pads have fabric which looks like material so do not cross over they're a different formula I will be marking on here new and old so I don't get these mixed up and I'll probably write new on here I've got this old reinker in a non stampin up pad that I use it's very small so I went ahead and committed to the larger pad these pads run $5.95 the reinkers are $2.95. And then we had an extra card party in April. Some of the ladies from card class get together at church and we do a potluck lunch. Sometimes it's at someone's house and just stamp all day, have great fellowship, and eat lunch together. I ordered these Stampin' Wheel cartridges. You put your own ink in them, and then they fit inside the stamp handle. So I've already taken the wheel out of this one, and this fits right down in here. You just drop it in here and press it, press it down in. I've not had very good luck <laughs> inserting it. Maybe that's why they're discontinuing them. You wouldn't want to get ink on your hands, so you'd have to have that. And then you put your wheel back in here. And then press this up. And then this turns in here while the wheel turns and continuously inks that up for you. So I wanted to try it out. Now I've got my retired list, and these are retiring, so... If you want these little cartridges, you're going to have to order them fairly soon. Yeah, I guess you're going to have to take take that off, but then how do you... Okay, I guess you can just use the handle to get it down in there, and then you can put this in here. And then take it the rest of the way out, because you won't, wouldn't want to get ink on your fingers. So these were $5.95 for the small ones. I believe the jumbo ones were $6.95 and they're, uh, you know, about twice this size wheel. Dorothy let us all choose at our potluck stamping day something from the goodie bucket. She is so sweet. She gives people, you know, if you had a birthday during that month, you get to choose something from her goodie bucket. She just let everybody pick something. Um... There's usually Stampin' Up! stamp sets in there. There's cardstock, solid color cardstock, or packets of designer series paper, ribbon, uh, the clear Stampin' Up!, you know, the clear blocks from Stampin' Up!. Uh, I don't have any of the Stampin' Up! ones, but you know, they're really nice. They have that indentation around here, so they're very comfortable to hold on to. And I chose these scissors because I have one tiny little pair of scissors, little fine point scissors that I use every time I'm in my craft studio. And so I wanted a pair for my card class bag. That way, because sometimes I forget to put these in my bag. So I will put these in my card class bag. And they have this their own little sheath to protect them. So I think that's perfect. So Cutter B by EK Success it looks like. And then they just fit in their own little sheath. And that will be perfect for my card class bag. So on Saturday, my daughter and I took our baby to the zoo. And I felt like I was going to fall down somewhere after the zoo. So I went to Joann's to get a Snickers candy bar and drink the rest of my bottled water and after after I ate my candy bar and felt a little better I thought well I'll just walk around you know and see what's here not really thinking I would buy anything all of the stamps were 40% off and I saw this little house mouse stamp he's a normal $8.99 and so I got him for $5.39 this cup reminds me of the cups that people drank coffee out of when I was a very tiny child. You know, the big old heavy white ceramic cups. And so I had to get him. 
This is actually mud pie. Ellen Jerky is the designer, the creator of House Mouse. Stampendous is producing these stamps now. This one is called Warm Cup, and this little mouse is actually Mud Pie. I guess because Stampendous is doing these, there's no color on here. Um, you know, my stamps that I get from Hobby Lobby have her, you know, they've got her name and her artwork on here. You know, she designed the, the stamps, but she's also colored them as well. So, I just kind of did my own thing with this. Just played around. Pulled out another little set that is about coffee and tea and used some various little elements from that. Look at that face. Oh my goodness. Adorable. So, that's really fun. I also found this $1 stamp. There were no clear stamps, but there were some wood mount. And this one says, I love you to the moon and back. It's Studio G, 2013, Katie and Company. Distributed by Hampton Art. And I have seen so many stamp sets on the internet that have this sentiment but it's like, I don't know, I don't want the whole stamp set. I don't like some of the other images in the stamp set. I'm really weird that way. If there are things in the set that I'm not going to use, I won't buy it. I know. I can't help it. So, <laughs> I did my own little thing, um, thinking that I don't have any moons. Well, I do. I do have some moon and stars, and I even have a Stampin' Up! stamp set with a little cow jumping over the moon, the nursery rhymes. But I just kind of did my own thing here. I took a circle die from Spellbinders and cut a cream colored circle. Then I moved the die over on my magnetic platform and cut again to get my moon shape. And look, it gave me a football shape as well. So if you need to make some footballs, save your moons. You'll use them later. Or if you need to make moons, save your footballs. You'll use them when football season comes around. And I used another little stamp set with some kind of sky movement and stars. And that turned out really cute. So just fun. I also picked up these Darice embossing folders. And this one is a bunch of music notes. It is called Sheet Music. And I've played around with these as well. If you look inside these folders, one side is raised and one side is embedded. That way they fit together and make the emboss. So I took a brown ink pad and put it on this raised area and laid my cardstock in there and ran that through hoping it would press my notes into the paper, so downward, and it did, and I just really like it. So that is actually the deboss, and here's the emboss side. So just lovely. You know, I've said many times, my son-in-law is in a band, and so we, we are required to make quite a few musical <laughs> cards. I also chose this tree folder, and it is called Forest Background. And you know, I've got a Sizzix folder that's got some trees, fencing, and some pumpkins, but I just feel like it's garden, garden or harvest time, and 